And welcome to this video that I've created for English second language teachers and future English second language teachers in Quebec. This video is looking at competency to reinvest understanding of texts and more specifically how to evaluate it with your students. So here are some of the things we're going to cover in this video. The first one is looking specifically at the evaluation criteria according to the programs for elementary, secondary, um, English second language, and secondary enriched. Then we're going to dig into evidence of understanding, what that means to evaluate it and the kind of activities that you can do to test reading, listening, and watching, but also how you can engage critical reading through the response process. Finally, we're going to look at how to reinvest understanding of text, so the kind of activities we, do, we use to do this with our students. And these include things like uh, evaluation, alternatives to the book report, some reinvestment tasks, and how this particular evaluation criteria links to the other two competencies in ESL. Okay, so let's get started. Um, let's have a look at the evaluation criteria according to the program for elementary. And this is a page that's taken directly from the Quebec education program, the PFEQ in French. And it looks directly at competency two. You can see right there. Um, there's a really nice description of the end of cycle outcome. So what are students supposed to be doing in grade three and four for competency two? And what are they supposed to be doing in grade five for competency, uh, competency two? So the kind of things they're supposed to do are identify and describe key elements and demonstrate overall meaning. And that is here in the evaluation criteria, um, understanding key elements and overall meaning of different kinds of texts. And they're also starting to carry out tasks, reinvestment tasks, okay? Selecting, organizing, and summarizing information. When they get to high school in the English second language program, so the regular English program, it's a similar idea. So this again is a page from the program for secondary ESL on competency two, reinvest understanding of text. The evaluation criteria is here. Um, you're gonna see there's participation in the response process. This is an earlier version and they've integrated response process into evidence of understanding. Um, this is evidence of understanding and use of knowledge. And I'm going to encourage you to pause the video for a second here and take some time to really read through what the students are meant to be doing for each of these. So as you get students to read, watch, and listen to different texts, you, this is the kind of thing you're going to get them to do. You get them to see if they understand and if they can reinvest their understanding somehow. We used to get them, we used to ask teachers to evaluate students' strategies as they read um, and watch and listen to texts, but we don't do that anymore. We can give them feedback, which is why that's crossed out. This is the uh, same page, but this time for the enriched program. And you're gonna see there's very similar kinds of uh, criteria, evaluation criteria that we're looking for. But the, um, the difference is, is that in enriched programs, we're asking a little bit more. So there's a more personalized response process, a bit more critical thinking. We're going beyond sort of the super le superficial levels towards um, more reinvestment tasks. This is um, a page from the framework from, for the evaluation of learning. So this is the later document that the ministry produced in response to um, the perceived need for more clarification on exactly how we are evaluating. So this is for the primary again, and you're going to see that they've really updated it to align with the secondary. So evidence of understanding of texts. So can the, can the student, students show you that they've understood what they're reading, watching, and listening to by identifying key elements, um, making connections between the texts. So they're understanding the overall meaning, they're connecting it to their own experience. And again, just like in high school, they're now, um, we're asking them to use their understanding. So ideas from the text, taking words and expressions and making something new. And I'll go through that again. This is for secondary. Okay, this is the latest version from the framework of evaluation of learning. It's been updated a bit more. And again, we have the same two uh, criteria, evidence of understanding and the reinvestment task again and again. What they have added here is the progression of learning. So they really wanted to emphasize that um, 
the, yeah, so we have evidence of understanding and the reinvestment, but they also have language repertoire, so words, expressions. As they read a text or watch a TV program or listen to a podcast, can they recognize new words, new expressions, um, new ideas from culture, and really use those in their own uh, reinvestment tasks? Okay, so really to sum up, if you take away nothing else, this is a little bit reductive, but here you are. There are two main things that we are uh, evaluating in competency two. And the first one is evidence of understanding through the response process. This is a long expression, uh, which we'll dig into a little bit more, but really it's comprehension. Have the students understood? That makes sense, yeah. The other part is, can they take what they've understood and then apply it? So it's the what and then um, the how. Okay, so taking some of those ideas and language and applying it. We're gonna focus on the first one right now, so evidence of understanding. And this is, again, I wanna emphasize, I've been saying read, watch, and listen to for a reason, because we are not just limited to sort of reading a short story or an information task text, but we're reading stories, uh, news articles, magazine articles, novels, comics, posters, poems, instructions, menus. Essentially, if there's some English language um, <laughs> written text in it, you can use it for, for competency too. This also includes things that they're watching, so media texts like movies, shows, ads, videos, TikTok videos. Um, YouTube shorts, so we can do all of those, including those. And of course, auditory, listen to. So podcasts, radio ads, and phone conversations that are examples of things that you can listen to. All of those can be included. All right, so once you've selected some texts to engage, so the text that the students are reading, watching, and listening to, we're gonna engage in the response process. Now the ministry has three different kinds of processes um, and they really engage competency two and three. Because this video is focusing on competency two, we're going to zero in on the response process. What is a process? A process is really just a way of explaining a series of phrases. Okay, um, phrases that the students move through as they sort of respond to a text. And um, that's been highlighted up there that students cooperate and construct learning together because the QEP, the Quebec Education Program, is really grounded in a socio-constructivist approach, which means that all the way through when students read, watch, and listen to texts, they're asked to really compare and share ideas with their peers. Okay, so this is digging into the response process again. And as mentioned in the previous page, there are different phases to each process. So it's a way of making sure that as we go through these texts with students, that we don't just stop at the sort of superficial level, we get them to dig in a bit more deeply and critically in their reading. Okay, so again, this is the individually and with others. So they're not just sitting there by themselves reading a text and answering questions. They are sharing with their friends and they are exploring the text, and you can see this down here, establishing a personal connection with the text and generalizing beyond. And this is what each of these phases look like. So as they explore the text um, on a sort of superficial level, and this is important, there are before, while, and after activities to do this. And this is something we may not always remember to do as teachers, but before we watch, read, or listen to a text, we ask the students questions. We get them to do a little activity or something just to really engage and activate their prior knowledge about a topic um, or determine what strategies they're going to use. While they're reading, watching, and listening, we give them something to really focus on. So instead of just putting on a movie, we say, while you're watching a movie, take note of who the main characters are and some of their you know, key personality characteristics or you know, try and discover what the main problem is, for example, and write down a couple of notes about that or fill in a graphic organizer of the timeline. After we watch, read, and listen, um, this is the one we're most familiar with, they can compare, they first of all think about things themselves and then compare with a friend. Okay, and again, we have those phases. So here we are exploring the text with others. So this is more superficial. 
level, sort of what's going on in the texts, what are some of the main ideas. We're establishing a personal connection with the text, so making links to you know, our own experiences and what we're reading, and then moving beyond, and this is the, the critical thinking. And again, I'm going to encourage you to pause here and read a little bit more closely. I've summarized the phases here so you can see how we really move from a more sort of superficial what's going on in the text, which is what's going on, what's the message, you know, who's the audience, who's supposed to be reading this, is it adults, is it kids, is it um, people from North America or people from Southeast Asia, you know, what details do you notice, um, those kind of things, what are sort of the who, what, where, when questions they, they ask themselves and then, and then share with other people. And again, the personal connection is really getting them to start thinking a bit more critically. And this is in preparation for that reinvesting understanding. In this text, who are you relating to? Have you had any similar experiences? What would you do if you were in that situation? So really getting them to sort of start thinking a bit more critically. And then generalizing beyond, they're really engaging their critical thinking skills and thinking about sort of the moral implications, for example of different uh, situations. How should people act in the situations? What kind of issues do we have in our community? What can we do about it? How can we address this issue? So engaging their activism. If you wanted um, some help with how to sort of engage each phase of the response process, there's a really great page here from the program again. I think this is from the secondary program, um, ESL. Uh, under related content and processes. And this is great because it gives you questions to ask the students at each phase. So you get a good sense of what kind of things to ask when you're exploring the text with the students, when you want them to establish a personal connection and go beyond. So just a reminder, so that was um, evidence of understanding through the response process. So comprehension of the text um, at different levels. And the other one we're going to talk about in a minute is how to then apply. Okay, so comprehension is not just um, basic understanding, but it's also, you know, before, while, and after, and exploring, connecting to the self, and extending beyond. In order to do this, there's different things that we can do. Typically, there's some stuff uh, that you may not have thought of. So, for example, as we, as we noted in the previous pages, this is a program that's based a lot on socio-constructivism. So it's asking the students not to sit by themselves, but to really compare their ideas and share with a partner or a small group. So as a teacher, one of the things you can do is prepare discussion questions so they can discuss their answers with their peers. Um, you can do comprehension questions, and you can also do reading texts, tests alone. Okay, so that's competency to evidence of understanding. If you're asking the discussion questions, though, this is an opportunity to also engage and maybe even assess competency one, right? Interacts orally with peers. And you might even consider um, maybe giving them some points for some of their grammar when they respond to different questions, but we'll get into that. So, but really evidence of understanding, um, one of the things that you can do is test their understanding and their engagement with their response process through discussion of the, with the peers. And you can evaluate both of those competencies at the same time. Different activities to engage and test. Uh, there's different kinds of questions. So you can give the students things to do by themselves, like true, false questions, fill in the blank, multiple choice, short answer. And you can also get them to compare once they've done that. So they explore it individually, then they explore it with a partner. You can do essays, you can do graphic organizers. Here's an example of um, some comprehension activities from an activity book. So this is a short version of a short excerpt from Huckleberry Finn. And you can see that there's a before you read and there's a while you read section and there's different questions that are engaging. Uh, these are sort of short, the first part is a short answer questions. And while you read, they're asked, the students are asked to fill in a graphic organizer. So there's different levels of the response process as well. We have an exploring, and we also have um, a kind of a personal connection. You can see here in the while you read, which of Huck's items that was not on your list would you include? Okay, so we're gonna look a little bit at the go beyond on the next page. 
So again, these are the different kinds of questions. You're going to see that after you read, this is uh, we have some multiple choice questions just to explore the text after they read. We have some short answer questions to establish a personal connection with the text. And again, they can share their opinions with the partner. All right, explore personal connection. Um, and then we do ask them to connect beyond, so to go beyond some of these things and explore those issues a bit more deeply using some of the things they've learned in the text they've read. Here's an example of um, the kind of things that they can do here. You're going to see again that this is less um, comparing with a partner, so less competency one, as it is uh, writing and responding to it. So competency two, really working through competency three as they connect beyond by writing about some of these ideas. And that's where the evidence of understanding, so that kind of comprehension, uh, moves towards reinvestment, so application. So just a reminder then that we've moved through the explore the text, make a personal connection to the text, and now we're connecting beyond, going beyond the text. Right, so this is from their comprehension, and now we're going to look at application. An application is where we move beyond that comprehension and we take ideas from the text and we synthesize them. So we need to select, summarize, and synthesize ideas from the texts. Okay, and usually we're making something new and this is almost always engaging competency three, which is writing and producing texts. So again, taking information from the text they've read, watched, and listened to, sort of summarizing the ideas, identifying them, uh, making key languages, uh, key vocabulary and phrases, and then synthesizing it into something new or different. And this is incredibly important that we start this as teachers because uh, at whatever level the students are at, whether it's elementary or secondary, um, because they will need this, as you know, when they hit um, university or CEGEP. We need, really need to teach them those higher order thinking skills. So going beyond just understanding what they've read and really using it to think critically and make something new so that when they get to stage or university um, or even a job you know and they're asked to read information and come up with a new idea or sort of a synthesis of it if they're asked to take what they've read and turn it into a paper or turn it into an advertising campaign that they're able to do that and in order to do that, we really need to teach students some reading skills. Now, this is probably a whole other video, but I'm going to touch on it really briefly. We really need to teach them how to identify key ideas. So, for example, um, if you're giving the students a magazine article to read, before they read it, you can get them to try and guess what the magazine article might be about. Just by looking at the image on the, the cover, the on the article, the title of the article, some of the subtitles, sometimes there's a pull quote. Um, so just to get them to sort of really notice some of the features of the text and sort of that will help them identify key ideas. We're teaching them those reading skills. You can teach them how to skim through a text, so how to move kind of quickly and see if they can get a general sense of what the text is about when they have to go through lots of texts really, really quickly. Um, and efficiently, as they get older, this is going to happen more and more. How to scan text to look for specific information that they'll need. And how to take notes as they do this. So all of this is really preparing them for the next stage in, in life. Um, and there's different exercises that we can do to help them through that. How to teach them how to summarize. This is really important, um, especially when we're talking about reinvestment. A lot of teachers, and I'm guilty of this too, you know, we ask students to do a research project um, or to take to read a text and then, you know, turn it into something else. And we are really surprised when they copy and paste <laughs> or we think that they're being lazy. But I'm convinced that, yeah, some of them may be lazy for sure. But I'm convinced that, you know, a lot of the time they just don't know how to summarize. And we really need to teach them how to summarize information so that they don't plagiarize and how to list you know, key ideas from their text in their own words and then use that list to write a summary. And then from there, how to use those, that sort of summary to connect those ideas together to make something new. 
um, especially through graphic organizers. That's something that we can talk about when we're looking at competency three. Here's a little example of um, something I used to do to teach my students how to summarize just as, as a quickie. So we would uh, take a short passage. I would teach them how to circle the most important words and phrases. You know, we would skim or we would sort of skim the, skim the text and then we would scan afterwards. Okay, so we would, you know, I would model this with them. We would choose a few together, read through it aloud, and then they would practice on their own in the I do, we do, you do fashion. Um, so they would choose what they thought were the key words and then they would write down the most important keywords. And once they had come up with that list, they would use the list that was on the side to create the summary. We did that a few times and it really helped teach them how to identify key ideas, to take notes, um, summarize, and then they could later synthesize. Okay. Um, so once you've really practiced those reading skills, it's time to get them to do some of those reinvestment tasks. And these are the ones, again, that involve um, taking information from text, text and creating something new. And there are two really great documents that I've got, you, got for you there to have a look at. The first one's by Diana Mitchell. It's 50 Alternatives to the Book Report. Um, and there's the other one, which is published by the Ministry of Education, which I think was called the Mies at the time. I keep changing their name. And it's... it's all different kinds of activities that you can use uh, as reinvestment tasks, different formats that the students can engage in. So here's a couple that I just selected at random. The first one was uh, from the 50 alternatives to the book report, and it's called character astrology signs. So the students are asked to, you know, take the characters from a book they're reading and figure out what signs you think the main characters were born under, for example. Okay, and it's a reinvestment task because they have to uh, draw on actions, attitudes, and thoughts from the book. So they have to take their understanding of the book and they are writing an explanation of why they fit the signs, so what signs and why. This one is from the other document, from the, they were called the Mies at the time, it's called Ask the Expert. So whatever topic you're working on at the time, you can do lots of reading, watching, and listening to different texts. Teach the students how to identify key ideas, take notes, and then with those notes, they can answer one or two questions. So using the text, so using the ideas from the text that you've summarized, they answer different questions to be published in an Ask the Expert section of a magazine. So you see how this works. They're using language and ideas to do something new. For the evidence of understanding, you can use a point system, straightforward, simple point system, you know, one point for a true false question answered correctly, uh, or a fill in the blank, or, or a multiple choice answered correctly, or two points for answering a short answer question. For reinvestment tasks, however, they're longer and more complicated, so we really recommend that you use an evaluation tool. And the good news here is that the ministry has provided a lot of evaluation rubrics that you can use and adapt to whatever task you're using. So you can see here, this is one for um, one and two ESL, Corn Enriched. So this is for secondary school um, and what it looks like and different score points for different, uh, the reinvestment tasks. So the kind of content that they needed to include or um, and how they've adapted it. So finally, um, competency two is kind of a complex competency, mostly because it relies so heavily on competency one and competency three. We cannot know what's going on inside a student's brain, whether they've understood what they're, what they're um, reading, watching, and listening to, unless they are really discussing it with their peers. Okay, so, so through, through competency one, through production of language orally, and we can't get them to reinvest understanding unless they're really engaging competency three, which is you know writing and producing texts that use ideas that they've read and talked about. So that is it for this video. The next one will really dig into how to evaluate competency three. Thanks for watching.